Welcome to today's webinar brought to you by the Alberta Canola Producers Commission. Today we're going to talk about Twitter, tick, Twitter and tech tips, making the most of your time online, mostly focusing on Twitter itself and getting started on Twitter. So as I mentioned, my name is Rick Talley. I'm with the Alberta Canola Producers, and you can also find me on Twitter on my personal account, at RickTLU, or we're also on Twitter as the Alberta Canola Producers, at Alberta Canola, and we'll explain those fancy usernames if you're brand new to Twitter, which about half of you seem to be at this point. So let's get started on Twitter. It's an amazing little technology that's only been around for five or six years, uh, but is really growing rapidly, especially uh, we're seeing in the farm community uh, with both farmers and businesses alike using it. So how do we get started on Twitter? Well, I work for Ward Toma. He's the general manager of the Alberta Canola Producers Commission. And back in April of 2009, he said to me one day, we should be on Twitter. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I guess we could be on Twitter. We don't really know what it is, but we may as well stake the claim to the name Alberta Canola. So we set up an account, and I posted our first tweet on April 23rd, which basically was a link to our Growing with Canola radio program, which we had just started posting online. And that was sort of the end of our Twitter experience for about four months. There wasn't a lot of people using Twitter. Uh, when I went back four months later, though, I was quite surprised to find out that we had over 100 people following us. And most of them were actually bands and independent musicians, which was quite interesting. And the reason for that was people were searching Twitter, and they had discovered that we had a radio program. So they started following us. Uh, since that time, most of them has left now that we're delivering agronomic information. But it just kind of shows the reach Twitter has. Even if you're not using it, you never know who's going to be following you. We're now up to close to 800 followers, most of them farmers and agricultural type people. So as far as farmers and Twitter, farmer, or Twitter is really built for farmers. Farmers tend to like technology. This picture is actually a little bit old. That's a regular old cell phone, not even a smartphone. Uh, but nowadays, farmers generally have uh, time on their hands, especially at seeding when auto steer is taking them back and forth down the field. Uh, this technology not only allows them to catch up on some of the latest happenings news-wise or with other farmers, but it's very quick and easy because it is limited to the size of a text and 140 characters. So they're able to fairly quickly skim through and gain information as well as gather information. So when I started this presentation, which was originally done at FarmTech, I asked a few of the farmers that were on Twitter that I knew to, to send me a couple of notes as to why they use Twitter. And, and Taylor from Glendon, Alberta said, well, for starters, I've met and had amazing conversations with some of the most cutting edge and successful farmers in Western Canada. Went on to say that he's talked about everything from land prices to air drills to seeding rates and seed varieties and more things than he can remember. And that since being on Twitter and talking to other farmers, he's actually changed some of the things he'll be doing in his operation this year. And the big quote is, all the things that he's changing this year stand to make his operation more profitable and sustainable, all thanks to Twitter. And, and Taylor's a young farmer getting started, and he's been able to develop quite a network of guys that he can bounce ideas off of. And I'll show you some examples of that. Uh, Jay from Calgary mentioned that his wife got him involved with Twitter during harvest this past year. And while things were slow at first, he's grown to appreciate it not only as a social networking site, but really as a business tool to connect with companies and organizations such as ourselves. He went on to say that he now stays in touch with companies, bloggers, producers, and seed growers on a regular basis. And while in the past he's used things like text messaging or phone calls to ask questions, he can see people doing that more often uh, with Twitter in the future. And that's certainly something that we've seen starting to develop is that uh, farmers who are on Twitter have a different uh, an access to a different group of uh, expertise. And certainly those in the business using Twitter have another way to, to reach out to growers and provide information and answer questions. So really, somebody will say to me, well, what does this mean to a farmer? And a really good example is a, is a Twitter friend of mine, Kevin Surface, who farms down in southern Alberta. Uh, and I pulled out one example of how he uses Twitter. So back in the summertime, he asked the question, can somebody tell me what this is on my corn plant? It's basically where a cob should be. And because Twitter is really built for a smartphone, he snaps a quick picture of what he's seeing on his corn. And within minutes, He's, or seconds, really, he's got an answer from someone in Ontario who says that's smut. So now he knows what it is. 
And what was really interesting about this when I talked to Kevin, uh, he had, or when I looked through his timeline, he had dozens and dozens of responses within a matter of minutes from people in Ontario, in Manitoba, in Nebraska, in Ohio, from all over the place that knew what this was. He didn't have to leave his field. He didn't have to look up a phone number. He didn't have to do anything other than take a picture and put it out there. Now, certainly he may want to go back and do some further investigation, but when you get dozens and dozens of responses that all tell you it's the same thing, you can be fairly confident that you've got an answer to your question just like that. Another example of why we see farmers using Twitter is this whole being engaged in a conversation. So here's a, a screenshot of some Twitter feeds that I took that happened back in January where a, a younger farmer up in the Peace River who goes by Fusion 87, Ernie's his name, uh, was having a chat with uh, an agronomist out of Three Hills about um, row spacing and, and seed openers. So they're able to carry on a conversation. And these are two guys who have never met each other, probably wouldn't know each other if they ran into one another uh, at a trade show. But they're able to discuss something uh, that's of interest to them and share information. The other part of Twitter beyond just being engaged in a conversation is you can see these conversations going on if you're following a number of people. So in this case, Taylor, who I referred to earlier, goes by Farmer Boy 9870. Because he was following both of these people, he was able to watch this conversation and then he was able to jump in, uh, provide some information to the discussion, and then he ended up engaging in a discussion uh, with Steve LaRock of Beyond Agronomy down at Three Hills. So now we've got two young farmers, one in, one in the Peace River area, one in northeastern Alberta at Glendon, and an agronomist down in Three Hills having a conversation uh, one evening in January. Where else would they do that other than driving to a meeting, going to a coffee shop, or maybe on a discussion forum, which certainly isn't as quick or as interactive as Twitter is. So as far as we see it, we put this tweet out last June, and we really do believe this, that by next spring, uh, Twitter will be our main tool in reaching growers to deliver just-in-time information and to interact with them. So let's talk about Twitter itself. And I know some of you are fairly experienced. Many of you are just getting started, and some of you have never been on it. But I'm willing to bet that most of you have either sent or received a text message and really what Twitter is. It's texting on steroids, and it's all about that 140 characters. So let's look at the parts of a tweet, especially for those that have never started it. So you've got 140 characters to say something in. So this was the example I used at FarmTech. So you might be sitting in that session I did at FarmTech, and you say, you put out there that you're at this FarmTech presentation that Rick Talley is giving on Twitter. Now, a couple of parts of this tweet to begin with is you'll see this is highlighted because it would be a hyperlink and it's got a pound sign in front of it. And a pound sign is what we call a hashtag. And a hashtag turns any word or phrase where you put the pound sign in front of it into a clickable link. So if you were to click on a hashtag like that, you would bring up every conversation going on in the Twitter, Twitter sphere where somebody had used the word or the hashtag pound farm tech 12. Uh, there's different ways that you can save searches on devices or on your computer so you can keep track of what people might be saying about Farm Tech 12 or about Western Canadian agriculture. So that makes it a clickable link and it also helps reach a wider audience. The second part of this tweet is rather than just saying my name, you use my Twitter handle. So again, this becomes a clickable link so anyone who gets this tweet could then click on my username and they would be able to bring up my profile and see all of my tweets, see all of my followers, and see who I'm following. The other thing that it does is it alerts me because somebody mentioned me that somebody's talking about me. So I know if somebody's talking about me when they use my username, which gives me the opportunity to reply to them and discuss it further. So you may want to say a little bit more. So you might say something like his bio and session summary is here, and you may put in a link. And a link is a very popular thing to do in Twitter because it's a great way to send people to, to further information. Now, the problem with this link, obviously, is it's really, really long, and it's going to use up all of your 140 characters. Well, the great thing about Twitter is that it shortens all these links for you and converts them into some obscure little coding system that takes you to the same place you still have characters left. And most of the platforms used out there 
on iPhones, Blackberries, or on your computer. I'll show these as a clickable link. So again, you can very easily get to that link. The, the key with making links on Twitter is not to use www when you make them, but use to, to use the HTTP colon slash slash to start an address. And then the other part of Twitter that you'll often see at the end is another hashtag thrown on the end, which is often more used as a punchline. So it often doesn't make a lot of sense. It isn't easy to read, but in this case, maybe you're tired of this presentation and you're thinking, maybe I'll just stick to using a fax machine. So you'll see different hashtags like that at the end, and it's just sort of a way to add emphasis, or like I said, a punchline. Okay, so one of the big questions that, that people always have as they're thinking about getting onto Twitter is if I say something, who's going to see it? And I am going to run through a setup a little bit later to help explain some of this, but if you put something out on Twitter, anybody who chooses to follow you is going to receive that tweet that you just sent. If you use a hashtag, anybody looking up that hashtag or following that hashtag, in the previous example it was pound farm tech 12 to indicate the farm tech 2012 conference, they would be seeing it. Even people who aren't on Twitter can see all of your tweets. All they have to go do is go to the twitter.com website, put in a backslash and put in a username. So if you're not on Twitter right now and you went to twitter.com slash Alberta Canola, you would see all the tweets that we've done going back probably six months or eight months or so there is a there is a limit on how many or if you put in backslash farm tech event then you would see all the tweets that were done on farm tech so you have to keep in mind that what you say is definitely not private much like anything else on the internet so who sees your replies so anytime you see a tweet kind of like an email you can reply to it so if you get a tweet from me and you hit reply I will obviously receive it because you replied to me, but who else is going to see it? It's not really a private conversation. So much like the original tweet, all of your followers would see that tweet, but only if they're following the person you're replying to. And I have an example to show that, but keep in mind that you're not going to see the conversations unless you're following both of the people involved. Then you become part of that network. And that's kind of the catch of Twitter, is that the more people you follow, the more conversations you'll be a part of or be able to watch. The other people that will see that reply is anyone who's following a hashtag used in that. And again, all of your replies are posted the same as a tweet on your Twitter profile. So again, if you go on to the Alberta Canola page on the Twitter website, you'll see all of our replies Plus, you'll be able to click on a little conversation button on the side and be able to see the conversation, even if you're not following anyone. And sometimes that's a good way just to get started in deciding, you know, are you really interested in following conversations or not? Had, my in my previous example, had Taylor not been following the two people discussing openers, he would have never seen that conversation. So here's an example of sort of a conversation that can happen in Twitter. So back on the 17th of January, this fellow, Derek Flad, posted a tweet that said, time to see how Alberta does crop production. He mentioned our farm tech event, which I also look after. He mentioned that username, said T minus one week, and said, and hashtagged at pound farm tech 12 and pound Western Canadian egg, which is, a very popular one abbreviated for Western Canadian agriculture and a lot of people in agriculture use that one so if you really just want to see what's going on in ag in Twitter that's a good hashtag to look up. Now I don't follow Derek but because he mentioned one of the accounts I look after I was notified of this so let's figure out who would have seen this tweet. Well anybody who is following Derek would have seen it. I saw it because he mentioned me and anybody following either the hashtag FarmTech12 or, or the hashtag Western Canadian Ag would have seen this tweet. Okay? So I replied to it. And I said, you know, we do it differently, everything under one roof. Have you been here before? So who would have seen this tweet? Well, anybody who is following FarmTech and also following him, Vlad02, would have seen it. But if you were just following FarmTech, you would not have seen this. But if you were following the hashtag FarmTech12, then you would have seen it too. So who would have seen this? P1 
people following both the people in the conversation or the people following the Farm Tech 12. So now we've dropped out anyone that's just following Western Canadian Ag. And much to Derek's uh, unknowingness, I was using this as a perfect example to use in this presentation when he said that. So he replies back to the Farm Tech event. He hits reply and says it's the first time he's been here. He's taken a job based out of Edmonton and uses the uh, airport hashtag, which is fairly common on Twitter, and that he had moved from the YXE, which is Saskatoon. So who would have seen this tweet? Well, anybody following, again, both Farm Tech and Derek would have seen this, or anyone searching the hashtag for YEG or YXE. So now if you're just looking at the hashtag FarmTech12, you're no longer seeing this. And then I replied once more and said you won't be disappointed, but now I didn't use any hashtags. So the only people seeing this, ha this conversation are now the people following both of us. So if you were only following FarmTech event, you wouldn't have seen most of this conversation. Or if you were only following Derek, you would have been dropped out right at the beginning. Now these are clipped off the website. So if you go to the website and you see a little icon like this, then you can click on it. And even though you're not following them, you can see the conversation. I'm hoping this is making some sense. It's hard to tell when I can't see my audience. So what about retweets? There's lots of discussion about retweeting. And retweeting is really, the, to me, the powerhouse thing about Twitter. Because it's a way to keep redistributing a message. What's really different about retweeting on Twitter is it's not like forwarding an email where you keep sending that email out and you might, you know, sometimes there's a, a funny joke or a picture sent out and as it gets moved around through the internet, you might see that thing three, four, five times and you've got this really long forward, forward, forward email with a hundred email addresses in it. That's not the way it works on Twitter. So if you get a tweet that's of interest to you, somebody puts out a message about, I don't know, maybe the price of canola is really high somewhere, and you retweet it, where does that go? Well, it goes to your followers, but this is really the key, that if they've already received that tweet from somebody else, they won't get it a second time. So you can confidently retweet things like crazy and know that the only people that are gonna see it are your followers, but if they've already gotten it, they won't get it twice. So if you think it's important, they'll see it, but if they've already gotten it, they won't get it twice. So you're not gonna flood their mailbox the way you would by forwarding a joke around to all your colleagues at work, and maybe they've already seen it four or five times. Again, with the retweet, if there's a hashtag used in it, anyone seeing that hashtag, following that hashtag can find it, and your retweets are posted on your Twitter page. So there's nothing private about a retweet. It's just a very efficient way to send a message to a much larger audience without the trouble of having to retype it yourself. So here's an example of a conversation using retweets. Now, I happen to be a big Winnipeg Jets fan, so on uh, 14th of January, I follow uh, Rick Ralph, who happens to be a TSN guy out of Winnipeg, and he mentions that one of our players isn't returning for the Winnipeg Jets. So who saw this tweet? Well. Anyone following Rick Ralph and anyone following the hashtag Winnipeg Jets would have seen it. Now I follow Rick Ralph, so I reply to him and I ask him if he can go down the hallway, knock on CBC's door and tell their play-by-play -play man that the player's name is Burmistrov, not Burmistrov, which makes us all crazy as Jets fans. Now I hashtagged it with HNIC, which is the Hockey Night in Canada hashtag, and the Go Jets Go hashtag, which is one of the real popular ones for those of us that are fans of our beloved Winnipeg Jets. And what happened with this? Well, two guys retweeted this, at least two, it actually a lot more than that. So these two guys, Fick and Aze and Timothy Brabant, that I have no idea who they are, I don't follow them, they don't follow me, but they were probably watching one of these two hashtags, either Hockey Night in Canada or Go Jets Go, so they saw the tweet and they redistributed it. So any message can be sent viral, as, we're, as we often talk about. So you can send something out and you have no idea where it's going, but it could go a lot of places and you can redistribute. Now again, anyone who is following, if there was somebody following Timothy and following me, they would not have gotten this message twice. They would have gotten my original, but then when Timothy sent it out, they wouldn't see it again. 
There's a few components of retweeting. Anytime you get a tweet, there'll be an option on your device or on your computer to retweet it. Anytime you see an RT, that stands for a retweet, you will have the option to quote a tweet uh, or, depending on the device, do something similar to quote a tweet where it'll essentially copy and paste the tweet into your file, but then give you the option to add more characters. So if you don't agree with something somebody just said or you want to add that, you know, the price of canola is high here too, you can type that in ahead or after the original tweet, which will be in quotation marks. At FarmTech, I had somebody asked me about when it means when you see an MT. And an MT is a modified tweet, and that's something you have to manually do is go in and change an RT to an MT. And the reason you might modify a tweet is if I got a tweet from somebody and I wanted to add a little conversation to it, I might run out of 140 characters. So I might strip some of the words out of his tweet just to make it all fit. But to be fair, I'll identify it as a modified tweet. It's kind of a just a sort of a user-friendly way of acknowledging that somebody else said this and that you changed the wording. So it might be taken out of context. Uh, if only all media was as good to make sure that things are identified when it's all quoted perhaps incorrectly. Okay, another part of Twitter is a direct message. So what is a direct message? Well, direct messages are the most private form of communication on Twitter. So two people who follow each other can send each other a direct message, which is not posted on your profile, it's not shared amongst your users, it's strictly between those two people. So it's often used, for example, if two people are following each other and Maybe they want to give each other their phone number or their email address, but they don't want it public. They might say, hey, send me a direct message or a DM with your email address. Now, keep in mind that anything that you put out there electronically, someone can still cut and paste something out of a direct message and post it. But it is fairly commonly used, and, and most Twitter followers tend to respect it. So you will get direct messages, and it's that way to share private messaging. So what's the point of Twitter after all that? Well, like we said, we think it's going to be the best way for growers, especially with the, with the vast adoption of smartphones, with so many more ag reps, companies, organizations, everybody getting onto Twitter. It's the new discussion forum on the go that's really built for a smartphone and being out in the field. So I want to run through one more example of, of something that we saw happen with Twitter, which is a classic example of the power of Twitter and also sort of runs through once more, where do messages go and who sees them and how do you see more messages? So back on Friday, August the 19th, John Gully, who goes by Wheat Gear JJ, sends a message and he starts with a mention. So it's not a reply, but you can bring up anybody's name and pop it in. So he asked Doug Moisey, if he's got any interest in coming to Westlock Barhead for a crop walk to look at when to swath severely damaged uh, canola from hail. So who would have seen this tweet? Well, anybody following John would have seen it, because this is a mention, not a reply. So everybody following John would see it. Doug Moisey would have been alerted that somebody mentioned him. And anybody checking on the hashtag Western Canadian Ag would have seen this conversation, or at least this tweet start. So a few minutes later, Doug Moisey replies to him and says, sure, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but not Thursday, 12 to 4, right? Gives him some information. So who would have seen this tweet? Well, only the people following Doug Moisey and Wheat Gear would have seen this. Or if you happen to be on Moisey's website on Twitter, you could have clicked on the conversation and seen the rest of it. Okay. So John replies to Doug. So again, the only people seeing this are, are people following both John and Doug. And he says, you know, would it be best to look now or closer to swathing? So they're starting to have a discussion about when to put this tour together. Now, as Alberta Canola, I happen to follow both of these guys. So I'm watching this conversation taking place because I follow both of them. So now I jump in and I say, look, at you two pick a day, a time, and a meeting place, and we'll post it on our site. John can get the locals out. So who would have seen this tweet? Well, only people following Alberta Canola and following Doug Moisey because he is the first person mentioned in the reply. So if you were following Alberta Canola and John, you would have missed this because John is mentioned second. You need to be following Alberta Canola and the first person mentioned. Okay, so this is all happening on a Friday afternoon. 
uh, if I remember right, about 2.30 in the afternoon. So now John replies to both of us. So now you need to be following John and Alberta Canola to see this because we're mentioned first. And says he'll check with the locals. Can and here's a good example. He asks us, "Can we direct message him our email?" So now we can share emails privately without putting them on the Twitter sphere, and start to make all this happen. So this is all happening on a Friday afternoon. By Sunday, uh, through email, John's let us know when the tour is. I've posted on our website. John sends out a tweet, which all of his followers will see, with a link to the crop walk with Doug Moisey. Here's the link to the place on the website and hope to see you there. So this is a regular tweet, so everybody following John would have seen it. Doug Moisey would have been alerted to the fact that he's mentioned in a tweet. And anybody following the hashtag Western Canadian Ag would have seen this tweet. And then Alberta Canola retweeted it. So now anybody who's following Alberta Canola would have got this exact same tweet. But if they were already following John, they wouldn't receive it a second time from us. And then by Tuesday afternoon, we've got a tour happening. So John sends it out. Anyone following the hashtags, either Canola or Western Canadian Ag sees it. And one of the great things about Twitter is it's easy to add a picture, and there's the crop walk happening. So started on a Friday afternoon. And by Tuesday, we had 25 or 30 growers out in Westlock with Doug Moisey looking at swath damaged canola. There is no way as an organization that starting on a Friday afternoon, I could have purchased radio ads, gotten advertising in the paper, done any of that, and had a tour happen that fast. That's the power of Twitter. Instant messaging to a wider audience than just sending an individual text. I'm just going to take a quick peek here and see if there's any questions coming in. And at this point, uh, I don't see any questions, but I do have a hello from... Uh, 2020 Seed Labs, who's using Twitter, and they are actually in Chile right now, testing canola seed. So let's run through a sign-up for Twitter. Um, if you're already on Twitter and you want to drop off now, that's certainly up to you. But for those of you who are a little bit afraid to sign up for Twitter, I'm going to sign up an account, and if somebody wants to take this account over after the uh, webinar, I'll certainly give that to them. Uh, so I need a full name, so I'm just going to... This is where you would put in your first and last name, ideally. Let's make sure this is still showing. They need an email address, and it's one Twitter account per email address. So I set up an account, which if you email this, it won't go anywhere. Uh, demo at gmail.com. And then it's going to ask for a password. And then you just click sign up for Twitter, and you're off and getting started. So it's going to check to make sure your name's fine. It's going to check to make sure you have an email. It's going to send you a confirmation. It's going to tell you whether your password's OK and whether your username is available. Now, see, I already have an Alberta Canola account. So do I really want to be Alberta Canola again? I can change this to whatever I want, because by default, it just took my first and my last name. So let's call this one uh, ACPC Twitter demo. Because you can be whatever you want. It's going to check. Wow, that name's already taken. I think I used that as a setup yesterday. OK, ACPC demo tweet. Let's see, that one is available. OK, so now I have a username. You can make your username whatever you want. I do prefer when guys do use their first and last names so that we know where they are. And then you can go ahead and create your account, which happens quite quickly. And now you've got an account. So like it says, let's get started in less than 60 seconds. So it's going to ask you to get going. So let's get going. And it's going to ask you to start following people. So it's going to randomly, based on your location or something else, find some people you might want to follow. And it sort of suggests you start following five. You can skip these steps. But for an example, you know you want to follow Alberta Canola. So you just type that in and hit Enter. And there you go. You can follow Alberta Canola. You can follow ACPC Grain Prices, which is an account we manage which sends out uh, the closing futures prices by Twitter every day. Uh, maybe you want to follow, let's say, Farm Tech event 
and then hit enter to search and there's the farm tech conference and you're now following them so there's three people you're following so we'll just move ahead and you can keep searching or adding more it's going to offer you suggestions you can actually go into categories like sports or entertainment or music and it'll give you a list of users in each of those ones we're just going to skip that one for now it's going to ask you if you want to find other users that you already are friends with people like that are on gmail or hotmail so if they've shared their email via twitter you might be able to find them there we'll just skip that step for now and there you go wonder why it won't send me an email to that account we'll figure that out later okay so now we've got a twitter page started and it's going to ask you if you want to follow more people. It's going to give you suggestions. And down here on the screen, it's going to show you the tweets of the people you're following that have come in. Okay? So one of the things you can do while you're here is, actually, let's go up and let's finish setting up your account. So we're going to go into your profile. And we're going to view your profile page. A lot of new uh, people on Twitter. Uh, when you first sign up to Twitter, your picture is an egg, and everybody knows you're, you're original, and you really don't want to be an egg your whole life. You don't want people to know you're new, and you don't want to look like a spammer. So in your profile, you just browse, and you can do this from a smartphone or on the computer. You just browse, and you upload a picture, a square picture that's going to represent yourself. Uh, there's your real name. So in my case, I normally use Rick Talio. In this case, it's Alberta Canola. I strongly suggest you take the time to put in a location. Uh, it makes a big difference to the rest of us on Twitter when we see somebody talking about a big hailstorm that went through last night if we know whether you're in Grassy Lakes, Hay Lake, or Slave Lake, or Peace River for that matter. So you just simply put in a location where you might be, put in as much as you want. If you have a website you'd like people to be able to link to and see up in your profile, you can put that in as well. And you should really put in a bio. Because for the rest of us, when you start following us, we think, do we want to follow this guy? And if all we know is you're from Edmonton, then we really don't want to know. So you might want to say that you're a farmer and a Jets fan and an and avid Oops, curler, or whatever it is you might want to be. So tell people a little bit about yourself, and then they'll have a good idea of what kind of things you're going to be tweeting about. So you save those changes, and then you can run through these other parts of your account. So let's look at the account. You can change your username anytime you want. If I give this account, which is now following three people to somebody, you can go in and rename what you are, you can go back in and change your real name. You can put your email address in, which you should do, uh, in case you ever lose your password. You can opt to let people find you by your email address. Uh, I generally deselect that one because my uh, email address is all over the internet. Select your language, your time zone, so that your tweets are coming out at the right time. Uh, what am I looking for? Mountain time. You can add a location to your tweets, which is especially useful if you're using a smartphone. It'll tell people where you are when you tweeted that. You may or may not want to disclose that information. You can uh, set some various filters up. There is an option to protect your tweets, which means only people you agree to let follow you can see your tweets. But I really don't recommend that. If you want to be private and not reveal who you are for what you say, then you're probably better off on a discussion forum. I generally don't bother trying to follow people who are protected because if you're not public then you're not really playing the game the right way. So you just save those changes that you've made. It's going to ask me to re-enter the password so I'm just going to cancel this out just to save time here. You can click on the mobile section where you can tie in a cell phone which I generally don't do. There's this whole notification section which is really good when you first start using Twitter. If you're not going to be active on Twitter, you can set it up to send you an email when somebody sends you a direct message, when somebody mentions you, when you're followed, when your tweets are retweeted, and those types of things. So if you don't plan on being active on Twitter, this is another way to know that there is activity involving your account on Twitter, just by selecting those or deselecting those. The profile page we've already done. And if you want, you can change the background of your, your Twitter page to look something different if you choose. 
And as you start to use more applications, uh, for example, you set up Twitter on your BlackBerry or you set up a, a Twitter-type system on an iPad, you'll be able to go into the applications and see which ones you've granted permission to. Okay? So that kind of runs through how to set up your Twitter account. They've changed this a little bit. So you can search Twitter for just about anything, but they've made it really easy to search a hashtag. So you can go in and search a hashtag really easy. So we're going to search. There's a conference going on in Calgary today, the Precision Ag Conference, which is using the hashtag preag 12 So if you search that up, here's everything that's being said at that conference right now. There's been a couple hundred tweets, so you can get a really good idea of what's going on in these conferences uh, just by following that hashtag or searching for it. Now, the other part of Twitter is that anytime you want to, as I hover over these, you'll see I get the option to reply, retweet, or mark it as a favorite, give it a little star. But all I have to do is click on anybody's picture. So let's take Killer Ken Coles, for example. He's the manager of Farming Smarter down in Lethbridge and the main organizer of this conference. So if I click on Ken's picture, I'm going to see his recent tweets. I'm going to see his real name, his username, and his bio, so I know what he's about, and a link to his website. If I'm not following, I can click there to follow him, and if I'm tired of following somebody, in one click, you stop following him. I can read his tweets, but what people really start to do is let's see who Ken's following. So I just click on that, and now I'm going to get a list of all three, all 476 people that Ken's following. So Ken's following all these people. Now I can do the same sort of thing. I can just run down the list and I can start following these people. So maybe I want to follow Roger Andriak. Maybe I want to follow Doug Broadway, for example. And again, if I change my mind later and I don't want to follow Garrett, it's a simple click to unfollow. You can also click on these little buttons and easily send a tweet to them or do things like block somebody. So I'm hoping this is making sense. I'm going to go back over now that we got to the block. So it's all clickable links in Twitter. You can follow your way around. It's easy to follow somebody. It's really easy to unfollow them. I'll explain what blocking is, though. So let's go back to blocking. OK. So blocking. Why would you block somebody or have the option to report them as spam? I don't think there's as much spam on Twitter as there is on email. And it's fairly well managed with a couple of clicks. So if you report somebody as spam, Twitter seems to do a pretty good job of looking after them. But sometimes you are it's not a matter of unfollow. You can unfollow somebody, but sometimes you'll have people that are sending you information. They're sending you links to weight loss programs or, or other things on the Internet that you don't want. You just don't want to hear from them ever again. If you block them, a couple things will happen. One is they won't receive your tweets anymore, which means they can't retweet your tweets, and they can't reply to you. So they can't send you a message. So you basically shut the door on them completely. Now keep in mind, if there's some crazy stalker, they can always go to your web page and see your tweets. You can't stop them from seeing it there. But you can make it much more difficult for them to receive them, and you can keep them out of your account and not have them either retweeting your stuff or sending you messages. So the big question is, you go through all this trouble, you're going to get set up, you're going to be busy going, so what are you going to tweet? Well, the four things I think you should be tweeting are, you know, tweet what you're doing. Don't go crazy and tell people every five minutes what you're doing or you'll pretty soon start losing followers. But if you're doing something interesting, it's the first day of planting, you're stuck, something else, go ahead and tell people. People are generally interested in what other people are doing, not on a daily basis, but when they are doing something interesting. Tweet things that you're seeing. So use that ability on a smartphone to take a picture and ask a question with it. Share a picture of your tractor stuck. Share a picture of a really good looking crop. Share a picture of hair pinning with a disc drill. And you'll start to engage people in conversations. And share things you've found. So if you find a really good link to a, a seedbed utilization calculator or a, a fertility management software program that's free and you want to let people know, Copy that link and paste it in or on a lot of websites. There's a simple little tweet this button, and it makes it really easy to share that information. 
and ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions on Twitter. It's an amazing little audience that's out there. Recently, I was looking for an iPad app that was really good at using Excel, but also let me save to Dropbox, and I went through the App Store. There was nine or ten different ones. I didn't know which one to buy, so I put it out on Twitter. Within a couple of hours, I had six or seven really solid recommendations that made me more comfortable buying an application for $20. And your tweets are generally only going to go to the people that follow you. So if you want to reach your wider audience, then use some of those hashtags. So use pound canola. Use Western Canadian Ag, and pretty soon you're going to start seeing the hashtag plant12, which is sort of a, a commonly accepted seeding season 2012 hashtag, which will be used not only by people in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba, but you'll be seeing tweets about how guys are making out planting corn and and soybeans in the U.S. Midwest and such. So what not to tweet? Probably equally important. Just remember, anything you put out there isn't going to be private. Now, you can go back in and delete a tweet, but people receive tweets so instantly on smartphones that by the time you realize you probably shouldn't have said that last night and you go to delete it in the morning, it's already out there even if you delete it. And once it's out there, it can certainly be retweeted. And you will be challenged. If you say something questionable or controversial, people will engage you in a conversation. I've seen where somebody's made a claim about poor service from a seed company, and the seed company rep replied and said, boy, that's not good. Let me know who your rep is. And then all of a sudden, the first guy said, you know what? I really wasn't that bad. I'm kind of happy. Uh, a few weeks ago, I called a Winnipeg Sun hockey reporter a hack, and one of his colleagues came over the boards and started beating me up on Twitter. We ended up having a you know a ten or twelve tweet conversation till we ended up being friends and sorted it out. And really, you should never call a reporter a hack, apparently, even if you don't like his material. So anything you say, it's not private. It will be challenged, and there's no bringing something back that you've already sent. So who should you follow to start? These are three accounts that I look after. So if you want to follow Alberta Canola or you want to get the closing canola future prices or you want information on farm tech, those are three good ones to start with. Just going to quickly get wrapping up here before I start into some questions. Hopefully we're staying pretty close on time, running a little long. A few Twitter apps and programs. When you first start, you're probably going to be setting yourself up on, on a website, on a computer but it's really built for smartphones. Whether you are on a BlackBerry, an iPhone, or an Android device, there's probably a native Twitter application. If you use BlackBerry, and I have a BlackBerry, one of the applications worth looking at is one called Uber Social. It's got a little bit more powerful ability to search and sort and, and manage some of the information on there. If you are running more than one Twitter account, uh, as I do, I run a personal account, and I run uh, the professional Alberta Canola Producers account. The easiest way for me to make sure I don't send the wrong tweet with the wrong account is to use two different programs. There's a really good program out there called Hootsuite. Uh, many people use Hootsuite. It allows you to have multiple columns on your screen or on your iPad and also lets you integrate your Facebook into, into your feed at the same time. I also use one called Echofond on, uh, on my iPad because it does a really good job of streaming tweets. And, and one of the things you'll see on Twitter is when you read people's tweets, you'll be able to see whether it was sent using Uber Social for BlackBerry or whether it was sent using Echofon for iPad. So it's a really good way to kind of gauge what people are using. And hey, you can always reply to somebody and say, do you like Hootsuite? What do you like about it? And if you're going to get serious about Twitter, especially from a desktop, then I just want to show you a quick picture of TweetDeck because TweetDeck is really the granddaddy, I think, of, of all the Twitter applications. And not to scare you, but this is a screenshot of, of TweetDeck running on my computer from a few weeks ago. And what TweetDeck lets you do is it lets you open up multiple columns all at the same time. So when I have TweetDeck running, I can see all the tweets that are coming in from all the people that Alberta Canola follows. Anytime somebody mentions Alberta Canola, it pops up in this column. Anytime I get a direct message, anytime somebody, when I'm, tweets using the word pound canola, I can see it. Anytime somebody tweets with the hashtag Western Canadian Ag, I can see it. And then I have the same thing going with the farm tech account 
on the other side of the screen. So if you become a power user, TweetDeck's a really interesting one, or when you just get time to check in once a day. Once you set up these tables, you open it up, it populates, and you can kind of quickly scan through and see what's of interest to you happening in Twitter. So with that, I'm going to wrap up the presentation part, and I'm just going to check to see if we've got any questions, and then I'll do my best to answer them. So if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, type them in here. So we did have a question, what is an MT versus an RT? And maybe you joined us a little late, Nicole, but uh, an MT is, uh, is customizing. You have to go in and you have to physically change the letters of RT for retweet to MT, which is commonly known as a modified tweet. So where you would use a modified tweet is if you're retweeting somebody and you want to add something to it and you're running out of letters, you might take out extra words. So maybe the person said, this is a really, really, really amazing crop of canola. Well, you might go in and cut out all those reallys, but then to be fair to all the people receiving the tweet that, that will recognize that you've changed it, you just use the word modified tweet and physically call it an empty. It's not something Twitter has built into it. Uh, there's a question on how do you follow hashtags? Well, for the most part, what I do is if I'm using my BlackBerry or my iPad, there's a way to go in and search for a hashtag, and then you can save it as a search. So most of those devices won't prompt you that there's a new tweet following it, but you can quickly flip over and check that, that save search and see what's happening. Something like a TweetDeck or a Hootsuite does alert you every time that there's a new tweet using it. So really, most people tend to you know, settle in with the most commonly used hashtags, things like Western Canadian Ag or Canola or an event like Farm Tech 12 or Pre-Ag 12. Depending on the device and the application, there's different ones that let you follow hashtags. And anytime you see a hashtag, it's a clickable link, so you can simply click on it and see what's being said about it. Uh, let's see, do you have a preference for mobile Twitter apps? Uh, on my BlackBerry, like I mentioned, I really like Uber Social. And on my iPad, I use the native Twitter application because it's pretty good. But uh, some of the really popular ones are, are Hootsuite. Uh, TweetDeck works really well on a computer. And Uber Social on a BlackBerry. And again, just keep an eye out on, on what people are using. Because again, on a, on, a, on a tweet, it'll always say what application they use to send it and what device they sent it from. And I kind of use that uh, as a way to, to check in on things. Uh, there's a question. Is there a specific etiquette for who to follow, or can you just click and follow at will? I don't want to be a creepy tweeter. There is no etiquette out there. You follow whoever you want. And, and when you're first on Twitter, you're kind, of, uh, you're kind of freaked out at the people that follow you. You have all these people... Uh, following you that don't necessarily make sense. I mean, on my personal account, I, I tweet a lot about the Winnipeg Jets, so I'll warn you, if you follow at Rick Talu, there's going to be a lot of tweets about the Jets. But then all of a sudden, I'll have somebody following me from Arizona who's into uh, flower gardens, and I have no idea why they found me or where, why they're following me, uh, but I don't really care. I'm not saying anything on Twitter that they can't hear. If I do get somebody following me that I think is a spam bot or trying to engage me in illegal activities, then I simply block them. Um, and we all do what's called creeping on Twitter. We all start surfing through other people's profiles to see who they're following and who's following them, and that's how we start to build uh, our library of people to follow. Uh, question on, can I watch this webinar again, or can I get friends to watch it? Yes, you can. We're going to post this as a uh, video on our YouTube channel, and it'll definitely be linked from the Alberta Canola site. And once we get start putting proceedings up on the Farm Tech site, it'll be there as well. And I'll send everybody who signed up for this a direct link to it. I should have it up by the weekend for sure. Uh, Got a comment here. Somebody loves Hootsuite for managing multiple Twitter accounts. Yep, Hootsuite's really good for that, and so is uh, so is TweetDeck. Hootsuite's a little bit better on a mobile one. Plus, it allows you to uh, post something simultaneously to your Facebook account and to a Twitter account. 
Uh, why can't I save a picture? That's a good question. If you're trying to save a picture to your profile and it won't let you save, chances are you've gone past the 700 kilobyte size and you need to shrink that picture down to be the, uh, to be the right size. Another comment that you can also use Hootsuite to link to, uh, to post on LinkedIn and Foursquare. So I don't see any other questions at this time. I'll just wait a couple of seconds here. And again, we'll have this available. And if you do have questions, feel free uh, at any time to just fire an email to rick at canola.ab.ca or get brave and tweet me at ricktlu. And thank you for joining us today. On behalf of the Alberta Canola Producers Commission, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. And we'll catch you all another time for another webinar. Have a great spring, everybody.